On today's episode, we are here with Jenny Brock, our resident cook. Jenny, what are we cooking? We're gonna make some mini frittatas today with kale and pancetta. Mmm, I can't wait for us to get started. All right, so we're gonna start uh, by sauteing our pancetta. The kind that I bought is already cubed up, so you don't really have to deal with much. So it's already um, cut little like that? Exactly. I already bought really? it cut little like that. It's about two ounces. Um, the package that I find it comes in is four, so use about half of it. stupid question. Do you buy uh -huh. it in the deli department? Or? Yeah, so you're going to find it okay. near near the bacon, okay. um, near maybe like the... Oh, the bacon. Yeah, Got exactly. it. <laughs> and that's basically what pancetta is, just like an Italian bacon. Uh, so we're going to put that right into our saute pan. It's already been preheated about medium heat because you okay. want it to crisp up and it usually takes roughly 10 minutes you want it to get nice and brown it'll cook a little bit once the frittatas are in the oven but you really want it to already be crispy so the texture stands out against uh, the eggs and everything else that's in there okay, so we've pulled our nice crisp pancetta out of the pan we're going to leave the fat in there though mm -hmm. so that we can saute the kale in that and get all that great flavor in there smelling really good in oh, here jenny you do want to make sure you turn the pan down though and i even kind of so, pull it off for a second so you have it almost on low almost on low okay. exactly um because we don't want to fry the kale when we add it back into the pan we just want it to get nice and soft so you want to add a little bit of your kale in there i've been dying to do this <laughs> so i'll only get three pieces guys <laughs> All right, and we've oh. got about so you put that whole the that whole, whole thing because it's going to oh, soften up okay. all together. We don't really want it to get crispy; we just want it to get soft. Boy, that looks so pretty. I know it gets really nice and vibrant green. Okay, another stupid question, Jenny. No worries. You tell There's them it's no such a great question. Oh, okay. So when you mm -hmm. get by the kale uh -huh. and you cut it up, uh -huh. do you wash it like you do lettuce? Yeah, exactly. You're just going to kind of just lightly. I would even just take like a wet paper towel and just kind of and dab then, it off. Oh, so it's okay. You do want to make sure if you do, if you do need to wash it beforehand, I bought the already torn and washed kinds. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, why are you I'm just lazy tell me sometimes. That? <laughs> <laughs> you do want to make sure that you remove all the ribs out. Um, they just, the flavor's not that great and it okay. adds kind of a weird texture in there. So you just want little pieces of leaf. Well, they're looking really good to me. The green is so vibrant. Mm -hmm. It is looking pretty much done. You just want them to be kind of nice and soft. They're still going to add some really good texture to your uh, frittatas as well. I always wanted to be a sous chef, so I guess <laughs> today's my day. Yes. So what am I doing? All right, Anna, so I'm going to have you crack six eggs for me. Okay. And that's going to be basically the base of our frittata. In the bowl here, we're going to combine the six eggs. We've got one third of a cup of ricotta, which is like a, um, an Italian cheese, basically. Very mild in flavor, um, but it's going to add a really good texture and kind of help those frittatas fluff up a little bit. I've also got a quarter cup of milk just to kind of thin it out a little. And we're going to do some roasted garlic in there as well. I'm taking my job very seriously. I, I want you to know. I can see that. It's very nice. You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. While you're doing that, I'll get this into here. She's <laughs> like, can you do it a little faster? <laughs> <laughs> that way we can have it all ready to go and whisk together. I'm going to chop up a little bit of this roasted garlic here. I like to put in the roasted because it's not quite as harsh as the fresh garlic. So it's just adding a little bit of kind of almost a sweetness. Right. And while she's chopping that up, I actually taught Jenny something that she didn't she know. She did. Because I was saying, what do you do when you get a little, the, the egg breaks in there? Mm -hmm. I think my mom must have taught me this, but you actually take the egg that cracked off and then you just, for some reason it tracks itself and you can get it out easier. Just my little sous oh, chef handy little tip. tip. <laughs> All right, if you want to pour those into here. Okay. I'll start whisking it all together. Oh boy, that garlic, you can really right. smell the garlic. It's really just nice added flavor in there, but not too, not too, too much. I am always a little heavy handed with the garlic. <laughs> if it's just for me, I'll put like six cloves in there, but I if think, it's for everybody else, it's yeah, a little I think cooks can never have enough garlic, right? Right. All right, so we're gonna get this all whisked nice together. I'm just gonna do a little sprinkle of salt. Are you using sea salt? I am, yes. That's just what I prefer. I like sea salt too. A little sprinkle of black pepper. Or white pepper if you prefer. While you're stirring that, mm -hmm. tell, uh, tell our viewers how to do the roasted garlic because I thought that was fascinating. Oh, it's really super simple. So you take your garlic clove, your garlic head, full whole thing, skim off, cut off just the very top of it so you're exposing the garlic inside but it's still all held together. I take a little piece of foil, 
plop it right down on there. You're gonna pour a little bit of olive oil over the top, wrap it up, and in a 400 degree oven, you roast it for about 40 minutes. Perfect, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's so simple and it's really nice. I like to just kind of have it in my fr fridge all the time. Does that last? Um, I'd say a week to two weeks oh, before cool. it starts to get a little kind of funky. Jenny, you look like you're a little heavy handed with the <laughs> oil spray or olive oil spray. I really want to make sure that they pop right out for okay. you and you're not digging around or there's not little pieces that stick. So okay. I do get uh, pretty thorough with my uh, olive oil spray. <laughs> All right. Now what do we do? So we've got our egg mix all ready mm -hmm. to go. We've got our kale sauteed, our pancetta crisp. Um, what I'm going to do next is actually put the kale in first. Okay. That way I know that it's evenly proportioned. I'm going to just do it right with my hands. Okay. <laughs> you can do it with uh, oh, your yeah. tongs or something else if you want. And you can put quite a bit in each one. I was going to say you're putting a nice little healthy portion inside there. You want to really get the flavor of all of everything. taste this. It's got kind of an interesting sort of nutty flavor to it. Oh, oh, actually, oh, it does. I actually right? really like the taste of it. And I've been really into um, recently, mm. while trying to be extra healthy, thank you very much, mm -hmm. um, making kale chips a lot, which is super easy. Um, you just toss the pieces, you know, kind of similar to how we had here, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper on a baking sheet, S low heat, 275. Mm -hmm. Um, so that they get nice and crisp, but they don't burn. Um, Jenny also did that on her blog, so yeah. you can check out exactly how to make those kale chips. All right, now I'm adding in the pancetta. Similarly, I'm going to do this by hand just to make sure that they're kind of getting even amounts. If you put this stuff into the egg mix before you pour it, it kind of all sinks to the bottom, and it's a lot harder to, uh, to get it all distributed. Equally. Exactly. Because I would not want to have a bite without some uh, little That's pancetta in there. Pancetta. Or, or a bite that's entirely pancetta. <laughs> I mean, that sounds pretty good, but at the same time, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. And thankfully, my bowl has a nice little pour spout. If yours doesn't, you can pour it into something else that's a little bit easier for you, or you can ladle it out okay. as well. Just looking so about an inch, half an inch to the top, or you know what? I'm going to go pretty much all the way wow. to the top on okay. that. They do puff up a little bit in the oven, um, but they settle back down. In case you're on a health kick too, these are each uh, 100 calories. Oh, wow. So you know. Who knew? I like that even better. Mm -hmm. Let me see. So I'm going to eat six of them. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Boy, they're so pretty. I can't wait to see when we get them baked and they come out of the oven. So after Jenny's finished pouring these in, they're going to go into oven at 340. At 340. Mm -hmm. And how long are they going to bake? Usually about 12 to 15 minutes. I mean, obviously everyone's oven is going to be a little bit different. So you want to kind of peek in on them at maybe 10 minutes and see if they're puffing and make sure that there isn't too much liquid on the top. Um, you want them to make sure that they're pretty much cooked okay. all the way through. So we're going to go to the oven and cook these and show them to you in about 10 minutes. Not really, not on camera time. It'll be in just a second. Mm, mm good. Now I know why they say that. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, Jenny, take it from here. So we just baked them for about 12 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 15, depending on how your oven is, and they are all ready to go. They're beautiful. Um, with all that spray we did, they pop right out really easily from the, from the pan. I'll usually run a knife around the edge just to make sure that they're not stuck. Um, but out they come. They look lovely. Um, these are great for, we were just talking about like a bridal shower brunch or a baby shower brunch. I actually make them almost every week for myself to bring for breakfast at work. Oh, um, that's a great idea. Exactly. Once they're cooled, you can pop them in a plastic bag, pop them in the fridge, and then I'll microwave them in the morning on high about 40 seconds and you're good to go. And it's so much healthier than, you know, maybe a bagel and cream cheese or something like that. You've got your protein, you've got your vitamins from the, uh, from the kale and a little extra flavor. I know. from the pancetta. Oh, Jenny, thank you so of much. Course, this was pleasure. a great little cooking segment. And you know what we say? When creativity knocks, open the door.